Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Drunk Knitting. We are teaching Kyle how to knit. And today we're doing double pointed needles. I must admit, I'm kind of um, mystified and terrified. Double pointed needles look really impressive when you're knitting in public, but they're so easy. <laughs> but it's fun to like watch people be like, what are you doing? Okay, so you've got your yarn. Yes. You've got your double points. And this is leading up to a glove pattern that you can find for free. We'll link it below. Um, it's Kyle's fingerless glove pattern. It's going to be a cool cable, just real basic glove where he's learning how to work in the round on double points, work a cable and make a thumb gusset. So increases. So we're slowly teaching him all the things that he needs to know to knit a sweater in Iceland. All right. So you're going to start with, um, I'm sorry. What was that? I'm going to be so proud of that sweater. It's, it's going to be the best sweater ever. It's going to be like eight months in the making. <laughs> Okay, so first thing you're going to do is your basic slip knot. We're going to cast on. Now, there's a couple different ways you can cast on with double points. Okay, um, let's do because we're doing some kind of chunky yarn, so we're not going to do what's actually in the pattern, which the pattern is 44 for the basic glove. Um, let's just cast on 32 stitches here. Are you just, you're just making up your length here. Yes. Now, you know the trick if you're ever worried about your length. I do know the trick. Wrap it around 32 times. 32 times. But I'm going to play some yarn chicken. I have confidence. Now, a couple different ways that you can cast on on double points. Some people like to cast them all on one needle and then split them up and join in the round. That's fine if that's what you like doing. I prefer to cast on each needle as I go. So now working these gloves, you don't, there's no specific number per needle. Some patterns, some glove patterns, some sock patterns will tell you how many cast on per needle. And that's important for your decreases on this one. It doesn't matter. So I've noticed like knitting scarves and stuff like that, that the loops at the very end are sometimes ginormous. Mm -hmm. And I understand that happens with double pointed needles too, where they, where the needles meet. Yeah, it's, it's called a ladder. Like a lot of people call it when they get ladders in their socks or their gloves. And we'll go over a couple different ways to kind of avoid that on these. All right. So I'd heard that people move stitches between double pointed needles to keep that from happening. Sometimes. Yeah, that's what I tend to do. And as you see, when I'm casting on, I cast on each needle. How'd you get so far ahead of me? <laughs> we're doing, are we doing 33? Did you say? 32. 32, okay. Yeah, and you need an even number. So if you make adjustments on this pattern, just make sure you're starting with an even number for your ribbing. Um, something that is, oh, hang on, divisible by four. Is 32 divisible by four? 32 is 33 and 36. All right. So we're doing eight on each? What was that? Are we doing eight on each? It doesn't matter. You can do whatever you're comfortable with. Um, the reason I made sure it was correct is so we can do a two by two rib. Okay. So this I have is how, this is, how, do I, how do I cast on my second needle? You just, see this? You just grab it and you just start casting onto that second needle. What? You mean like you just pretend the first one's not even there? Yep. Get out of the way, first needle. Yeah, it feels a little awkward at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. The most important thing is once you get all your stitches cast on, you wanna make sure not to do a twist when you join. Once you catch up, I'll get there. I will take a drink of my old fashioned until you do. It's gonna be a while. I've got a lot of old fashioned, it's fine. Can you tell us what you've been drinking in lockdown? Um, everything. <laughs> you know, it's funny. We've actually like, we got rid of two milk crates full of booze from our bar because we realized that we're just never going to be 
you know, peppermint bark vodka people anymore or sugar cookie vodka. We like whiskey. We like gin. And that's pretty much it. So we've like downgraded our liquor cabinet to just the really good stuff. Um, so it's been a lot of old fashions, a lot of wine. Like I went through, I don't remember, so many bottles of 99 Crimes, which I don't know if you've ever had that wine, but it's great. Or 19 Crimes, I'm sorry. It's an Australian wine. And each bottle has like one of the crimes that would have gotten you sent to Australia back in the day, like on the cork. So when we first got our first bottle of it, we were with friends and we're like, we're going to do whatever crime comes up on this, on this cork. And it was big of me. And we we're like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm actually going to um, start over again. Cause I realized that when we were practicing joining yarn, um, I was joining on this part right here. So there's kind of this. So, oh yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to get rid of that. I think the next crime that we got was setting fire to Underwood and then impersonating an Egyptian was another crime that would get you sent to Australia. Wow. Yeah. All right. What have you been drinking, Kyle? We've been um, drinking mostly beer because... Um, you can get beer delivered here, um, but if you want to go to the liquor store, um, you know, you have to deal with all of the unmasked people standing around coughing on one another and pressing up against you and thinking that one foot is six feet. So we've been trying to stay COVID free around here. So right now I'm drinking, um, Einstock, the Icelandic beer. Nice. Have, have some more Viking beers upstairs. We did um, do like a curbside pickup of like $300 worth of booze a couple months ago. So we do have some whiskey, gin, and vodka. We're pretty lucky that the bar was already very well stocked. The only thing is kegs of beer. And one of our friends is a brewer, so he drops off kegs once in a while for us. Are we doing 33 or 34? Or 32? 32. 32. Okay. Double check my math. We've been drinking a lot of your coffee, actually. We got two, I guess they're 64 or 32 ounce, like, um coffee presses so we're making two in the morning every day nice yeah i definitely had to start cutting my coffee with decaf because i was drinking so much we did just order some decafs so there's 11 on this one and i'm just going to pretend that that thing's not there and i'm just going to throw the next one on seems to have possibly happened. It feels weird at first, but really like once you do it, just pretend it's one big needle. Doo -doo. I guess that's the secret. It's, it's all one, it's all a single pointed needle really. Like the cable needles and everything are all the same thing. Right. Just kind of reminds me of like those things that my brother used to make in Boy Scouts. So how many double pointed needles should you use? I see that some have sets of four and some have sets of five. I always buy the sets of five because it's okay. better to have a few too many. Uh -huh. Most patterns you're going to use four. Um, but sometimes like with hats and things, it's a little less awkward to have that fifth needle. Or when you get to like sleeves on a sweater, when it gets to the bigger parts, it's easier to have five needles. And four of them are gonna be your working needles that you're actually gonna have yarn on. And the fifth one is your empty needle that you knit with. So I realized that what I need is I have this, I have this case for my double pointed needles, which is nice and everything. But what I really need is some sort of like faux Victorian case 
that looks like something that Dr. Van Helsing would have for like fighting vampires. You know, it's got to like open up and have the little places for all of the vampire fighting tools. I think somebody uh, needs to invent like a really good needle case for both double points and something for circulars. I have never found a good circular needle case. And I want that. I want a thing that you like open. Yeah. It's like you're about ready to kill some shit, mm -hmm. but you're actually just going to be knitting. Let's get on that. Somebody make that. I will buy it. I think maybe we just need to design it. All right. We need to design it and get somebody to fabricate it. <laughs> so there's my one giant needle. Okay. So the next thing to do is to make sure that all your stitches are straight, that you haven't twisted something around mm -hmm. and got all funky. You want to make sure that your stitches are not twisted. Twisted stitches. Right. That's the name of our heavy metal cover band. Twisted stitcher. All right. So once you're sure you're not twisted, you want to put a stitch marker on there. Stitch marker. Just like that. I have one somewhere. Got it? Yeah. These stitch markers need to be cooler too. They do make some really good ones. Like if you look on Etsy or different people's websites, like you'll see some really awesome stitch markers. Uh, I always lose the really awesome ones, but I buy them. All right. Stitch marking has happened. Okay. So then you're just going to start knitting. Okay. Now the pattern calls for a knit two, purl two rib, right? I personally always like to end on a purl two. So I'm knitting with three needles. Yes. You're knitting. You're going to start knitting with three. Yes. Okay. So knit two and then purl two. And then when you're getting ready to knit again, let's bring in that fourth needle. Okay. And that's how it's going to go from now on. Now that is just my personal preference. I find that when I end a needle on a knit two and I start with a purl two on the next needle, I tend to get a bad ladder. Okay. So that is why my first row, I always kind of adjust to where I'm always ending with that purl two. And you'll see right here, I'm gonna slip a stitch to avoid doing that. There we go. And the first round is always the trickiest. This you're gonna find pretty easy because you're on chunky yarn and big needles. With smaller needles, the first couple rounds feel really weird. Okay, I got a knit two and purl two. Yep. And, and then bring in that fourth needle. And just stick it right in here? Yep. Keep on going. Yep, and this is gonna be round one if we were working from the pattern. So a lot of this seems to be just ignoring the parts that look weird. Yeah, it definitely is. And that's why I always tell people like knitting in the round or knitting on double points, especially it looks really hard and it's just not, it looks impressive. And then I feel like people are disappointed when they realize how easy it is. I'm coming to the end of my first round here. All I'm gonna do is just slip that stitch marker just like normal and start in on that next round. My stitch marker was too small to fit over the needle. So I just attached it to the side of the stitch. So I'm gonna have to- That happens, you'll have, to, you'll have to move it up. Another thing I can do, you can do is like, if you have a little bit of waste yarn, you can just cut off a piece and tie it in a loop. Because sometimes these bigger needles, like the stitch markers, just don't fit. I just happened to luckily find a big one. And I don't know how that happened because I can never find stitch markers when I need them. All right. So I just popped out a stitch marker. Or uh, not a stitch marker. I just popped out a needle here. So I'm just going to feed that one back into the loop here, I guess. Just move along. Dun, 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 
we're downsizing this office of mine into the smaller room and giving my daughter this big room. And I'm trying to convince myself that I can knit up my yarn stash before then okay. by making mittens. Do you have a preferred set of double pointed needles? I don't really have a preferred brand. Um, I tend to just kind of buy whatever I see on sale on double points. I will say my preferred material tends to be wood or bamboo. Okay. When I first started knitting, it seemed like all I had were the metal double pointed needles. And the curse words I used when one needle would like fall out. So just imagine you're knitting and then just a needle falls out because it's so slippery. Yeah. I find anyway. that I went slipperier needles but this double point stuff seems like I want them very not slippery yeah and a lot of it like it always depends on what kind of um project and yarn you're using mm -hmm. a lot of people like the metal ones for socks because sock needles are so tiny and the little wooden ones break a lot okay but I'm just not I still prefer the wood. And a lot of people like with the Icelandic wool yarn, they like metal needles too, because this wool is very catchy. Like it sticks to the wood a lot, but still I would rather be knitting wood with this. Now, when you're knitting a sweater, an Icelandic sweater, maybe metal, but Icelandic mittens, we're gonna go with these wood guys. I wish I could show on camera how pretty this yarn is. And I just don't think I can. It's like, it's black, but it's got these little flecks of color in there too. So like flecks of white. Is that Icelandic? Yeah. Where did it come from? I mean, um, I, I ordered it online, but it's the, this brand, the Alpha Slopey. Okay. It's just so like squishy and nice and it feels so unique. And I just imagine there was a happy little Icelandic sheep getting herded up in the spring. We should try and find an Icelandic like wool farm place person. Not that we can, not just that we can get wool from, but that we can visit while we're there. And watch them get the sheep all nickies. Yeah. You know, I want to know that the sheep are happy. That's I bet they're happy little sheep. Knit to is next. Yeah, we we're just knitting to and purling to and all the way around. When you see that written in a pattern, you're going to see it as either K2, P2 around, or you will see it as work two by two rib for however many rows. Uh, we'll go still. over some pattern speak too. That's good. I need to figure that out. Yeah. If I'm going to read our book. Knitting patterns look like another language at first. Um, but once you get used to it, it's just so much easier. And I think a lot of the reason I've never really studied it, but I assume the reason that we started using these abbreviations in knitting is from publishing. You know, it would take so much more book and more paper to actually like write out everything and I actually bought a book one time where they talked about how they wanted to just write everything out so they wrote out the patterns okay so instead of saying like k2p2 they would say knit to pearl two and they didn't use any abbreviations and I actually found it like way more frustrating because I was so used to those abbreviations so I was just thinking that you, we could go back to um, or or with digital printing, you could just have a book that expands because you're not writing on paper anymore. So you could have it say knit to pearl two, or you could. You could. Have it way. You could, but honestly, like after you read a few patterns, your brain is just going to adjust, and it's just so much easier. The only thing that gets frustrating is when you get into those vintage patterns and like they say things that we're not used to, and that the language has changed a little bit. So that can get weird. The first time I ever saw like work as expected, my brain almost blew up. I'm like, what is that? 
work as expected. Yes. Which it makes sense once you get it. Um, so say you're, you're working this cable glove and we're gonna do a thumb increase. If you're on a cable row, instead of saying knit six, purl two, cable six front, I might say work as expected to increase marker because you know it's expected to work that cable row. That's what you've been doing every other time. So I got to the end and my last stitch loop is huge. Did that fall off? No, it was just gigantic when I knitted it. Did you try like tightening your, your short end? I pulled on, you know, the yarn that I had control over and nothing happened. What about this little guy? Did you pull on this little guy? Oh, my long tail? Uh-huh. Oh, hey, like some stuff's happening. Oh, thank you. That's why I'm here. I still don't really know what the yarn is doing as much as I should. Uh-oh. I think I have a yarn over. How'd you do that? I don't know. Oh, so, that, so can that, it just fall off? Cause it looks like it hasn't done oh, anything yet. I'm just gonna pull it off then. And then my next stitch again is huge. Oh wait, I can shrink that by pulling this thing, I think. Oh my gosh, this is. I guess now, this, you... this is my ladder building, isn't it? Or is it? <laughs> Do you still have the same number of stitches? <laughs> oh, let's count and find out. I seem to have 33 now. That's not good. So are you still working that knit two, purl two? Mm -hmm. So somewhere you must have like a knit three or a purl three or something weird. Oh, you know, I've got, I've got another yarn over here. I think this is, a, there's an X. Yep. So I'll figure that out when I get to it. You can either unknit back to it. <laughs> or in the sake of we're just practicing, just fix it when you get to it. I'm going to fix it when I get to it. That's yeah. a long way to tank. If we're talking about ladders, there's a couple things we can do. So if you've got super loose, that is just partly tension and learning how to like hold these needles. When you're working, just pretend that the two needles that you're working on are just like straight needles or circulars. Okay. Kind of ignore these bottom ones. Now, if you're getting ladders in your knitting, one of the easiest things to do is every few rows, I'm gonna get to the end of a row here. I'm back to three needles. I'm gonna set this down and just knit a few more over from the next needle. It's a little tricky for a second. And then do that same thing again on the other needle. So just every few rows, just kind of adjust your stitches okay. and that keeps you from laddering. Another really easy fix is just really concentrate on the first stitch of each needle, just knitting it a little tighter and keeping your needles a little closer together. And that helps fix those ladders as well. All right, I think I have a knit four. I do, I do, I do. So I guess I am gonna have to go back. All right. You have a knit four like right in front of you? No, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine stitches back. Okay, yeah, unknit those. All right. I was gonna say you could fix it if it was like your next little thing. You could just unknit a couple rows, drop a few stitches, pick them up again. It's a little scary, but we could do it. So a lot of times when I'm knitting backwards, 
I, I have the working yarn going under the stitch that I bring back. So I'm slipping it off and then pulling the yarn out and putting it back on. I'm guessing I'm doing something wrong. So what I do, if you can see this, I just stick my needle in that loop underneath and just slide that stitch off. It's pretty easy. So you're literally unknitting. Like you're going into the row below and just pulling it off. All right. We're back at the dawn of history. And you know, once you finish this row or this round, um, you can just start knitting around because this isn't the actual glove that you're doing. Right. This is just kind of your practice for knitting in the round. So you can just switch over to stockinette when you get to your stitch marker. So there it got to the stitch that's supposed to be my first purl and it's where my stitch marker is. And that should be a knit, right? We knitted two when we started. Yeah, you knitted two. Something's messed up here. I can't count to two is uh, part of the problem. Pearl two, knit two. No, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pearl this one to forge ahead and see what happens. All right. This is just practice. This is not your actual glove. I've been saying that for like two months now though. <laughs> I'll show you what the finished glove is going to look like. And keep in mind, this is unfinished, unblocked. But it's going to be this little guy. Nice. Yeah, that's your glove pattern. Just a really simple cable with a thumb and a thumb gusset, which is this little increase right here. And I made them extra long because extra long gloves are important. At some point, I'll need to learn to block things. Blocking's easy. We'll actually block these gloves. We'll do an episode where we block them because it's so simple. Blocking helps like with the final shape of everything. It also helps with moth prevention if you're using real wool. Oh. What? Can you tell me about moth prevention? Because I have a whole closet full of uh, suits that I would like to not get moths, you know, and I've heard horror stories of bringing moths into the house. And Yeah, you definitely don't want to ever get moths in your knitting. Um, the most important thing is sealing up your knits, you know, Ziploc bags if you can. Um, another thing is cedar. Like I have a cedar chest behind me that I use for a lot of my knits, especially like my old vintage stuff I keep in cedar. And then I have these little like cedar cubes and cedar rings that I put in every single knitting drawer that I have. So yeah, you definitely want to work on that moth prevention. The wool moths, natural predators. I don't know. I know my cat chases moths. And it's so funny because like I'm such a bleeding heart for moths and butterflies and things outdoors. But anytime a moth gets in this house, I'm like, you are dead. If you don't get out when I open the door, you're dead. Just wondering if I can get a lot of lizards or spiders or something. Maybe, I bet spiders catch moths. When we first moved into our house, like we opened the kitchen cabinets and there were just pantry moths everywhere. So before we moved in, we had to get them out. Yeah, definitely like keeping your knits sealed up is a good way. It's not always the prettiest, but. So all of this yarn that I have, I should put them in bags. Yeah, put them in like Ziploc bags. Or if you, it's an excuse to buy a nice cedar chest to store your knitting in. And really, doesn't everybody deserve a nice cedar chest? Somewhere along the lines, I've just, uh, can't count to two. Could also be because we're talking and drinking. Could be. 
because I bet you could do it normally. Now, would you agree with me though that double pointed needles are not as hard as you thought they would be? Not as hard as I thought. It's the counting that's hard. Probably. Yeah. Knit two. Yeah, my knits and pearls are just uh, in random places. So All right, you'll get the hang of it. I don't know, maybe I just follow the ones that are underneath now. Just stay on a stay on a pattern. My knit fours are just gonna be knit fours. It'll be fine. My pearl ones are just gonna be pearl ones. You know, it's still a rib. Knit four pearl one, still a rib. Yeah. It's just a more complex pattern. Yeah. Knit four pearl one, knit two pearl two, knit two pearl two, knit five pearl one. As long as you do it every time, it's a design feature. All right, Let's see if I can move along here. Once you get to the end of this round, let's just knit around. I've got to the end of the round. Okay. But it's not very deep. It's fine, we're just practicing. So this isn't your actual glove. Like three We're just kind of getting used to the feel of double pointed needles. So just knit a few rounds just in the round and see how that feels for you. All right. The main point of this was casting on and knitting around, but I'm not a huge fan of like working stock and net on double points at first because it does tend to curl. So it'll feel a little funky when you're a newer knitter. I need to abbreviate that NK when you're an NK. And once you get the hang of this, it's gonna teach you how to cable, which again, it's gonna be much easier than you think it'll be. Looks like witchcraft. It always does. But at the end of all of these lessons, you will have a pair of fingerless gloves with a thumb gusset and a cable. And in a few short months, as long as everybody can keep a mask on and stay home, we'll have an Icelandic sweater. Everybody stay home and knit. Yeah, right? You have the perfect excuse to drink in your underwear and knit socks. The cat on your lap. Right? All those Netflix shows you always wanted to see. Well, I actually find that I'm doing more now previously because it's easier to collaborate in a lot of ways with people who are far away because we can't do anything where we need to be physically close to each other so we're like hey you want to like collaborate on this thing via zoom and I'm like why not that is true I'll tell you what though like I've always loved travel but I've never felt the wanderlust like I felt lately like all I want to do is get on a plane and get us get out of here but oh. without it getting on a plane. What is the thing that you want to do the most when we get to Iceland? That's a good question. I'm looking forward to meeting some Icelandic people. Um, I would like to photograph a sheep. I've had this idea in my head for like a year now of setting up a portrait studio in a barn or something and just trying to take portraits of sheep and then seeing if they have individual faces and characteristics and personalities, you know, in the way that I know people's dogs or cats do. So I like to do that with some sheep. Nice yearbook photos. Would be interesting. I haven't spent a lot of time around sheep. Like I've seen them in my periphery because like I grew up in a small town farm built, you know, area and there were lots of sheep around, but I never interacted with them. Except for one time when I was riding my bike and a whole bunch of sheep were in the middle of the road and I helped a farmer get them back in the pen. 
And then they were just loud and cute. So homework, practice on that for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to go ahead and start on the pattern. All right. And we'll work on cables together. All right. So yeah, next time we see you, we will cable. And then after that, we'll thumb guss it. All right. Thanks, Joan. Thank you, Kyle. It's great. And thank out. you for watching.